Hey, Hammy here. Uh, back with section four of chapter nine, in which we will look at ways that the cell cycle gets messed up and can lead to cancer. A okay, cancer is the abnormal growth of cells, and we call that abnormal growth a tumor. Okay. Uh, there's it usually starts out as benign. Okay, and we don't really call them cancers yet. Uh, it's just where a couple cells are maybe not working quite right or their DNA is sort of messed up, uh, but they're not invading neighboring tissue and they're not spreading, okay? And sometimes those are gotten rid of by the body. They're recognized and gotten rid of. Uh, other times, you know, they might sit there for a while, for months or even years uh, until more mutations happen and it could become malignant. Okay, now they're considered cancerous. Uh, they're not encapsulated. They don't have a capsule around it, and they readily invade, readily invade neighboring tissue. Okay, uh, if they detach, uh, travel through the bloodstream, and start growing, start little tumors other places. We call this metastasis, uh, and usually. The, these kinds of cancers result from mutation of genes that control the cell cycle. Because remember the cell cycle, the cell cycle is the cell uh, growing and then dividing into two cells and then more cells, more cells, more cells. And again, the development of cancer can be gradual, multi-step, uh, <clears throat> often takes more than one mutation uh, that kind of add on each other uh, that will turn the cell into more of a cancer cell that might spread. Uh, here's just a graphic of that. Uh, you know, right here, maybe initially, uh, we have a mutation in a cell here. Uh, and that mutation uh, causes that cell to either grow, you know, keep going through the cell cycle. And we have kind of a primary tumor here that might just be benign. Okay, not really noticeable. Uh, but then you notice that there may be another mutation in another cell over here. This cell may sit there for a long time, but eventually it may, may take over. Okay, we call this, we say cancer in situ. Okay, it's just kind of in place. It's not really has developed. Okay, now when that purple cell sort of takes over, we now say, you know, it can spread it goes into vessels, either lymphatic or blood vessels, and can spread to somewhere else in the body. Okay, and then we say metastasis or metastatic, metastatic tumors. I can almost get that out. Um, can spread from the original primary tumor up here because it has traveled through some kind of vessel in the body. Remember, cancer cells are your own body cells. It's not like an invasion, an outside cell that gets in that's dividing. Okay, cancer cells are your own cells that have gone haywire. Uh, and there's five characteristics uh, that your book gives of why cancer cells, what makes your body cells considered to be a cancer cell. Okay, number one, they lack differentiation. Okay. In other words, they're not specialized. They don't necessarily do, like say it's a liver cancer cell. It doesn't do what a normal liver cell should be doing. Okay. It's there with all the other liver cells, but it's not functioning. It's not helping the liver to function. Okay. And oftentimes they're immortal. What that means is they can, usually after about 50 times or so, a cell will stop dividing. Uh, but they can just keep going through the cell cycle to make more and more and more and more. Uh, number two, because of the mutations to the DNA, uh, they often have abnormal nuclei, uh, can be enlarged from extra copies of genes or extra numbers of chromosomes. It might be missing chromosomes, okay? But somehow the DNA, okay, the DNA is messed up somehow. Uh, number three, uh, we talked about this a little bit last unit. They do not go undergo apoptosis. Okay, normally damaged DNA will lead to programmed cell death. Okay, uh, there's uh, the genes that control this might get messed up, and so they don't go undergo apoptosis, and they are abnormal, and they just sort of sit there and they're not gotten rid of like they should be. Uh, number four. 
they form tumors. We already kind of talked about this. Uh, normally when cells grow, uh, cells grow, they have what we call contact inhibition. In other words, if there's a cut or a cell dies or something, the cells will divide. But once they touch, okay, once they make contact, the cell cycle is inhibited. Okay, cell division is inhibited. They don't just keep growing and piling up on each other. Okay, they grow till you get that even like sheet of tissues. Uh, with cancerous cells, they lose that control and they start to pile up and make tumors. Uh, number five, they undergo metastasis. Uh, we just talked about this. This is where the tumor fragments and then can spread through vessels, either lymphatic or blood vessels to other places in the body. And oftentimes the tumors will grow so large that uh, blood supply is an issue. Uh, they can't get enough oxygen and nutrients. Uh, they will release enzymes that cause angiogenesis. Genesis means to make angio vessels. Okay, they, they form, they cause new blood vessels to form to feed that tumor, that clump, that mass of cells, nutrients, and oxygen. Again, this is a chart that's found in your textbook uh, that's just comparing cancer cells to normal cells. Uh, just the five or six things that we talked about. Differentiated, okay, undifferentiated, uh, the abnormal nuclei, they do not go, undergo apoptosis, no contact inhibition, uh, and they're disorganized, multilayered, again, that kind of goes with the contact uh, inhibition. Okay, if, they're, if they don't stop growing, they sort of clump up, form tumors, uh, and that they can spread, whereas other cells kind of stay in place. They stay a part of that tissue. What can cause these cancer cells to do that? Uh, there's two types of genes that are the most commonly uh, mutated to form cancers. Uh, number one is oncogenes. And number two are tumor suppressing genes. Okay, oncogenes start as proto oncogenes. Uh, proto oncogenes code for proteins, which are often signals, if you remember the last unit, signals which promote the cell cycle, cause the cell to divide. Okay, uh, think of it a lot of times as proto oncogenes as a gas pedal. Okay, and they cause it the cell cycle to speed up. Okay, obviously if that doesn't work right, gas pedal gets stuck or breaks, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna divide out of control. Uh, number two, you have tumor suppressor genes that code for proteins, again, cell signaling, uh, which inhibit the cell cycle and even might do programmed cell death or apoptosis okay, if something is wrong. Okay, so if there's a if there's a mutation in the tumor suppressor gene. Uh, think of this more like the brakes of your car, okay? And if this slows down or stops the cell cycle, if something happens to your brakes, something breaks on your brakes, okay, your, your car is just going to keep going. It will not stop. So the cell will just keep dividing and it won't stop. Uh, so we want to look at both proto-oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes and how that affects the, the growth of cancer. Um, I always like this graphic. I've used this in bio one as well, <clears throat> where here's the normal cell cycle. Okay, you've got a gas pedal and a brake pedal, and you can speed up, go through cell division if you need to, or prevent cell division if you need to. Okay, proto-oncogenes okay, are like the gas pedal, okay, and if they get mutated, they become an oncogene. Okay, proto-oncogene is the normal gene. If it gets mutated, the cancerous gene is called an oncogene. Uh, and that's too much gas. The gas pedal breaks and you're just whoop, and you're going to crash. Okay, You're going to divide out of control. Uh, the other one, tumor suppressor genes are like the brake. Okay, That can slow us down if we need to. If there is a mutation in there, the brakes don't work. Okay, We're going to crash again. It's going to just keep dividing, 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 because there's no brake to slow that down. So I just like this visual of a, of a car uh, that can't speed up or can't stop speeding up or can't slow down. Uh, tumor suppressor genes, again, they directly inhibit the cell cycle and prevent cells from dividing uncontrollably. Uh, some tumor suppressors we already mentioned cause programmed cell death or apoptosis. Uh, and a mutation to this 
cause the brakes to not work and the, the cell will just accelerate through the cell cycle and divide and divide and divide. Uh, two big examples are the retinoblastoma gene. Uh, rest, retinoblastoma is an inherited condition. Uh, they first found it with an eye cancer. It's now been linked to cancers, uh, breast cancers, uh, ovarian cancers, and other cancers like that. Another biggie is the P53 gene, which codes for proteins of the same name, the P53 gene. Uh, they estimate that about half, about 50% of human cancers involve a mutation in this P53 gene. Okay, in other words, <clears throat> the cells in whatever part of the body uh, lose the ability to prevent growing out of control or they don't let them self-destruct if something is wrong. Okay, proto-oncogenes, it's a little bit confusing. Proto-oncogenes are the normal genes, okay, which are part of a stimulatory pathway. Again, they increase the cell cycle. Okay, so if you get a cut or something like that, it releases enzymes, it releases signals, pro signal proteins that cause the nearby cells to start growing, to close up that wound, to heal that wound okay, or that injury. Okay, and then normally, uh, once there's contact inhibition, then it, the signal will stop and they will stop dividing. If there is a mutation, the proto-oncogene proto become oncogenes. Okay, these are now considered the cancer genes. Uh, they can specify an abnormal protein product or product, or they produce an abnormally high level of these stimulatory proteins, uh, which causes cell division, cell division, cell division, cell division, just lots and lots of it. Um, there are about 100 oncogenes, which lead to tumors. A common one is the BRCA1, okay, which stands for breast cancer uh, type 1 mutation. Uh, that can be hereditary, and there's actually genetic tests out there uh, that people can take to see if they might have this mutation, might have this gene. Uh, and if you do, uh, it's not a death sentence. It just means you go for more like earlier and more often screenings uh, to try to detect any cancer that might be forming. And if you catch it early, treatment uh, is, has a much, much, much higher success rate. Uh, this slide just kind of showing an overview. Okay, here's our cell here. Uh, just about, you know, the two different pathways, okay, where you have proto-oncogenes producing growth factors. And again, if you think back to uh, last unit in which we talked about cell communication, a uh, proto-oncogenes produce growth factors. Those growth factors, remember signaling, here comes the ligand uh, into a cell receptor, a G protein, a receptor tyrosine kinases, um, you know, that cause phosphorylations. Okay, here's our phosphate group. Uh, and it causes a sort of a, phos you know, a phosphorylation cascade, causes a response of something to a gene product that's going to cause the cell to go through the cell cycle. Remember, proto-oncogenes are growth factors, are cell cycle stimulants. Okay, And if that gets messed up uh, and it produces too much or something, it can cause the cell to go through the cell cycle too much. Uh, tumor suppressor genes, uh, which are found you know, on your chromosome, produce inhibitory proteins uh, that inhibit the cell cycle. And if those go wrong, again, it will grow out of control because the breaks are bad. There are, other, there are other causes of cancer. Uh, one of the other big ones besides the proto-oncogenes and the tumor suppressor genes is this idea of telomeres. Okay, when you have your chromosomes like this, here's the centromere holding them together. Okay, on the ends, you have a little bit of buffer on the ends called a telomere. The telomere is on the ends of the chromosome. Uh, usually they're just like extra adenines and thymines and it's just a buffer, and every time, every time it divides, you lose a little bit, and you lose a little bit, and you lose a little bit. Uh, of each cell division, they get shorter and shorter. When they get too short, the cell will no longer divide. Okay, it, it's shut down so that you don't start to damage the genes and stuff that are on that chromosome. Okay, cancer cells. Uh, cancer cells can actually uh, get mutations in the telomerase gene. Uh, the telomerase gene was an enzyme that maintains the length. 
So how can cancer cells divide, 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 divide? If their telomeres are getting shorter and shorter and shorter, they will actually start producing an enzyme uh, that will keep adding that buffer to the ends of the chromosome so that they can keep dividing, okay? Uh, which allow, this allows the cancer cells to continually divide. Uh, so another, it's kind of another situation in which cells might be dividing out of control. And again, another treatment option uh, for cancers to maybe prevent this telomerase and slow down that growth of, that, of those cancer cells. Well, uh, that's it for section 9.4. Uh, we have one more video here to talk about it, about more prokaryotic cell division, and then uh, we'll finish up the chapter.